Welcome, guys. Welcome to our a little bit of our devotional time, um, and that's what we're doing here. We've been uh, doing this for a few weeks now, and we just take a a look at um, chapter and the little book of First John, it's at the, towards the end of the New Testament. Um, again, I say this every time, but the purpose of what we're doing here is um, really going out to those of us that uh, claim Christ as our Lord and Savior, and um, that's what we're doing. So we're having just a little bit of a, kind of a devotional Bible study time. And what we've been doing is we've been working our way through this little book called um, 1 John. So if you've got any questions about the topic and stuff that we're talking about this today and you want to type in a question, I'll try my best to, to address that question. I uh, just ask that you would uh, help us to stay on topic. Um, that would be great. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be picking up in the book of 1 John. And we're going to be looking at verses 4 through 6 of chapter 3 of 1 John. 1 John is written by the Apostle John. He was one of the inner three that walked with Jesus, one of the twelve apostles. Uh, when John is writing this, John is an older, uh, older in life, probably somewhere between 70 and 80 years old as he's writing this. He's not writing this to a specific church or to a specific group of people other than he's just writing to Christians. And what had obviously happened is, is, is as anything that starts new, everybody jumps on it. And then as it as the newness wears off, people start falling away. And so people had jumped into this whole idea of Christianity because it was new. And, uh, and then as the longer it went, the more uh, people started fading away. And so John, is, John addresses some of that. He addresses those in the first couple of chapters that had fallen away. He also is addressing people who are claiming to be um, uh, Christians, but then they're not living out their their Christian faith and he said they're just they're just saying they're Christians in word but they're not having any kind of faith indeed and so he's writing that and so this is what he says in verses 4 so we look at verses 4 5 and 6 and 1st John chapter 3 starting with verse 4 here's what it says it says this it says everyone who sins is breaking God's law for all sin is contrary to the law of God and you know that Jesus came to take away our sins and there is no sin in him Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or, or understands who he is. One of the big things that happens uh, when we talk about being a Christian is this whole idea of sin and our sins being forgiven and where does the role of grace come in and do we have a role to play and do, or do, we, do we have to... Can we earn our salvation? Can you lose your salvation? There's all of these topics and all of these things that go around when it comes to these kinds of things. What John is talking about here, he's, he's talking about our faith, our faith matters, what we believe matters, who we're placing our faith in also is incredibly important. So faith is based on who is the object of my faith, way more so than is what my faith is in, but who is it is. And he's saying, listen, anyone Everyone who sin is breaking law. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Um, other translations say it like this. Anybody who's practicing sinning. So John is addressing this idea that as a Christian, that I can practice sinning. That I can, can continue to sin over and over and over and over. Uh, and if you're doing that, then something is wrong. If I'm not making some type of progress, I'm, I'm not moving towards the goal of being more Christ-like, then there's something wrong with my faith. It's kind of like if you're on a diet and exercise program and you're gaining weight instead of losing weight, you're getting more out of shape instead of in shape, and something is wrong with your program. If you're trying to get out of debt and the program that you own has got you more in debt after three months than when you started, there's something wrong with the program, okay? And so if your faith program is this, is that you can keep on sinning and you can keep on living a destructive life. You can keep on ignoring God's law. You can keep on ignoring the things that God says to do. And there's no progress. There's no getting more uh, like who Jesus is and living the way that he did and living out his truth. Then there's something wrong. There's something wrong what's going on. And that's exactly what John is saying here. He's saying, listen, if you keep on practicing sin, another way to say this would be this. Are you taking sin in your life seriously? Now, if you're not a Christian, you're not a believer in God, you don't even, you don't even think that, that there is sin. You may think there's right and wrong, depending on the circumstances, depending on the law or whatever. But for a Christian, it's very clear that's been laid out. There's some things that are sin and there's some things that are not sin. 
And if I'm practicing sin as a Christian, there is something wrong with that. Now, here's, here's the place that we always go. Well, Marty, are you saying I'm supposed to be sinless? No, it's, it, we cannot uh, get rid of all sin in our life, not this side of eternity. So there's going to be sin in our life. There's going to be times when we make a mistake. But there's a big difference between making a mistake and living a mistake. There's a big difference between making a mistake and choosing to live a rebellious life against God. And that's what John's talking about here. So if you're practicing sin, then there is something that is wrong. It is contrary to the law of God. Because when I give my life to God, I receive His Spirit, I receive His power, then that's going to help me defeat sin in my life. Uh, verse 5, he says this, he says, And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. There is no sin in him. And so here's just repeating this over and over. Jesus is sinless. He came to take away our sin. And here's, this is this is an important, important thought for us to, to always remember as Christians. Jesus not only forgives me of my sin, he also wants to give me the power to defeat the sin in my life. So Jesus wants to forgive me of my sin. Yes, I need Jesus to forgive me of my sin because I cannot live up to his standard. But Jesus also wants to give me the power to overcome that sin. And so the, the, the goal here is not for Jesus to keep forgiving me of sin. The goal is here is that I will continue, that I will start and continue to walk closer to God and closer to Jesus to the point that I get where my, I sin less. And that's a, that's a great phrase. I cannot be sinless because I'm always going to have something. I'm always going to make a mistake. No, nobody's perfect. But I can be on the journey to sin less. And that's, that's one of the key things here. And then in verse 6, he says, Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin. As John's saying, if I'm a Christian and I'm living in him, then I'm not going to have any sin whatsoever in our life. No, but I will be under uh, conviction for that sin and I will try to change that. Uh, a couple of questions to think about here is this. Is, do, uh, do you think God gives you permission to sin? I think that's a great question for us to ask as we're reading these verses. Do I think, do you think that God gives you permission to sin? You know, I don't. I don't think he gives us permission to sin. He doesn't want us to sin. He knows the destruction, the destruction that it causes. He knows uh, the things that are going to happen when I sin. So God has not given me permission to sin. Another way to ask it would be this. Um, do you think God cares if you sin? Well, absolutely he does that is th because it breaks his heart it breaks our relationship with him it breaks our our connection or our friendship with him another question you can ask another way to ask it this is can i follow jesus as a child of god and continue to live a life that goes against his way of life and and that's that's here when i read this these these two three little verses this is what i hear john saying he says listen listen I, i'm a sinner and i'm saved by god's grace and because God's grace is on my life, that grace has given me the power to live a life that reflects who God is in my heart. And if I am having this attitude that, hey, I'm a woeful sinner and it doesn't matter, I'm just going to keep sinning, 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 practicing sinning, I'm just going to keep doing whatever, and God's going to forgive me when it's all over with, that is somebody that doesn't have a relationship with God. That is someone who doesn't know him. And that's what he says. He says that in verse 6. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. I cannot live a life of continuous sin and know who God is. If I know who God is and I know what he's done for me, then one of my goals is going to be to be sinless. I'm going to sin less. I'm not going to keep doing the same things that I've constantly been doing. I, under, I need to understand that. So the question is not, do I sin? The answer there is yes. Do you sin? Yes. That's not the that's not the question. That's not what we're what he's talking about here. The question is this: Is does your sin bother you? Does your sin bother you? And I would challenge you to do that. T take a piece of paper and write that question down. Just write down: Does my sin bother me? If your sin bothers you, here's the next question: Does my sin bother me enough to do something about it? And what John is saying is that if you're a true follower of Christ. If you know God, if you're walking with God, when you know you're sinning and when you have sin in your life, it's going to bother you and you're going to do whatever you can to stop that sin. Not just keep living in it and say, oh, in the end, God is going to forgive me. 
I know it can be a little bit complicated um, because we don't really want to think about this idea that um, that my sin matters, but it does. My behavior matters. And true, I am saved by faith through grace, yes. But grace is not opposed to effort. Grace is opposed to earning. I can't earn my salvation, but once I receive that salvation, I can't continue to live in sin. I can't earn my salvation. I can't, but once I have it, once that gift has been given to me, once I receive it, I have to do something about the sin in my life. I just can't keep being a, a practicing person of disobedience to the things that God tells me to do or not to do. It just doesn't work that way. And what John is saying is, hey, listen, if this is who you are, you may claim Jesus, you may preach Jesus, you may go to church every week, but if you're not doing something about the sin in your life, if it doesn't bother you, then you don't know God. Because when we have God, we cannot continue to live in sin. Because when I have God, I have His Spirit, and sin and God cannot coexist. Uh, John was saying there that we were bought for a price. That's right. That price, Jesus, Jesus bought us with a price. So I don't, I don't own Marty anymore. Uh, you don't own who you are. You know, a lot of people think that we own our bodies or my body. No, no, my body is Christ. And so I have to follow that. And if I'm a Christian, I'm going to. Am I going to follow it perfectly every time? No. But do I have a desire to do that? One of the things that Andy Stanley says all the time is this. He, pray, he said he prays, he prays this. He says, I want to want the things that God wants. Because sometimes I don't even want it. But I want to want the things that of God. And as I am in this relationship with God and as I'm walking with Him, it's just that it's a walk, it's a process. So I can't just keep sinning. I just can't practice sin over and over and over and be a Christian. Those two things do not go together. So I hope that doesn't uh, confuse you. I hope it gives you some things to think about as you keep reading in these little devotional. And 1 John, um, I encourage you to read slow. Uh, read the Bible slow. And uh, when you have a question, uh, research it. Uh, Talk to your small group, talk to your pastor, uh, getting plugged into a church, and uh, hopefully that we can get through this thing together. Because living the Christian life is really, really hard, and we really need each other. And so um, remember, I can't, if I'm practicing sin, I'm in a constant state of rebellion against God, then I don't know Him. If I know Him, what I'm going to be rebe rebelling against is the sin in my life, not just uh, looking for a free ride. So, all right, guys, I hope you have a great rest of the day, wherever your day may be and whatever you're doing, and um, we'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you soon.